Hi everyone, it's Melinda, and today we're going to be looking at calcite, which comes in so many beautiful colors. Uh, calcite is a carbonate mineral, uh, and it's the most stable polymorph of calcium carbonate, to be exact. Um, it is extremely common and found throughout the world in sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks. Uh, some geologists consider it to be a ubiquitous mineral, uh, meaning that it's found everywhere. It is one of the most <laughs> abundant minerals uh, in the world. Uh, so if you are, uh, you know, looking to buy small pieces of calcite, uh, little tumbled stones or little chunks, um, or even, you know, like a polished little stone like this, um, these things should not cost you a lot of money, um, unless it's like a, a specialized type of calcite. Uh, it's generally very, very affordable. Um, <clears throat> so calcite is the principal constituent of limestone and marble, and I do have some uh, what was labeled as pink calcite marble from Canada, so I'll start by showing you that. Go. So you can see this is the calcite part of this marble. Gorgeous. So pretty. <clears throat> Another piece. So it is usually the most abundant mineral present in limestones and marbles. Uh, so those rocks are extremely common and make up a significant portion of the Earth's crust. Um, they serve as one of the largest carbon repositories on our planet. That would be calcite in the form of limestone and marble. The properties of calcite make it one of the most widely used minerals. Uh, it's used as a construction material, uh, abrasive, agricultural soil treatment, construction aggregate, pigments even, um, pharmaceuticals, and many other things. Uh, and it has more uses than almost any other mineral. So we'll start showing you a couple of other ones. This one is gray calcite from Essenville, Ontario. Really cool, all the different colors this mineral comes in. <laughs> so many. Looks like little uh, pyrite cubes in there with a red coating of likely joethite, referred to as joethite after pyrite. And if you're seeing green crystals, those would be diopside. A beautiful chrome green diopside at this location. Another one from that location is more of a clear, clearer gray and does have some nice tiny little sprinklings of diopside there. I love the texture of this beige calcite. This one is from Wilberforce, Ontario. Isn't that cool? <laughs> oh, I love it. I know it's just beige calcite, but I just love that texture. I can't get enough of it. So cool. <clears throat> so other polymorphs of calcium carbonate are the minerals aragonite and vaterite or vaterite. Um, aragonite will change to calcite over time, which is pretty neat. And the word calcite is derived from the German calcite. Uh, which is a term that was coined in the 19th century from the Latin word for lime, calx. Very cool. 
<clears throat> this one here is some orange calcite again with some pyrite crystals that have a red coating uh, most likely joythite after pyrite when the pyrite starts to change into joythite and that has been something that's been noted for this location. Oh, look at that gorgeous color of calcite too. Wow. Get a little pyrite for me. And this little orange piece from the same location. It is such a vibrant orange. It is the most vibrant orange one I found. And it just looks like a candy. I just absolutely love this piece. Does it not look like a jujube? -jube? <laughs> uh, it looks juicy. And it does have a bit of the green, the jemmy green diopside that this location is known for. <clears throat> from that same location this is more of a cream colored one and again it has that pyrite cube with the joey thite inclusion on top of it you can see the pyrite goes into the crystal into the calcite crystal <laughs> I like this little piece. Oh, I can't even look at it. Little cubes. Looks like there's tiny little cubes on top of the larger cube. <laughs> of pyrite. Too cool. <clears throat> So, when applied by archaeologists and stone trade professionals, the term alabaster is usually reserved for a variety of gypsum. However, <laughs> uh, it can also refer to a very similar looking uh, translucent variety of fine grained banded deposits of calcite. Um, so that's just good to know, some good knowledge to have. Um, there are over 800 forms of calcite crystals uh, that have been identified over, you know, throughout history. Um, the most common ones are uh, scalenohedra and rhombohedral. And <clears throat> I did put a couple in here. I'll show you them as I go along um, just to show you what they look like. But I will be doing separate little videos on the different uh, different types of formations of calcite as well, including you know, uh, dog tooth calcite, um, Iceland spar, uh, as well as I even have some uh, calcite cubes as well. Uh, so that'll be in later videos. So I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a taste of these other calcite formations. Um, the first one is optical calcite. Um, which is transparent and sometimes is called Iceland spar and it's used for optical purposes. So this beautiful little uh, cluster on, uh, we believe, basalt, um, you can see here the hunk of beautiful clear calcite. This down here would be a quartz druzy. It's most likely from India, I'm told, but uh, I don't know for sure. Now this beautiful clear calcite uh, will chip away uh, in the rhombohedral formation very, very easily. <laughs> I chipped away some of it myself a couple of weeks ago uh, to do some tests on. And it is so clear and it does have that optical effect that um, optical calcite or 
really any clear calcite uh, should you know portray um, and by that I mean if you draw a very thin line on a piece of paper and you put a piece of clear calcite over top of it it should show two lines as you look through the calcite it's a really neat effect of um, nice clear calcite crystals isn't that cool and like I said I am going to do another video highlighting all that too there's a lot that goes into that it's so fascinating <laughs> Alright, so acute uh, skeletohedral crystals are sometimes referred to as dog tooth spar or dog tooth calcite, uh, like I said, and so I did include a couple of them here in, in my collection today, but I will be doing a video solely on uh, dog tooth uh, calcite in the future, but here are just some tiny little specimens. These ones were raw counted um, and given to me by a friend. He got them um, near Arn Prior in Ontario. It does not want to focus. There we go. Um, so again, this, you know, I absolutely, absolutely love this. Um, it's not a museum quality specimen that would show off the dog tooth, but you can certainly see that formation. And I have a soft spot for dog tooth calcite. <laughs> it's too cool. And here's another one from the same location. So neat. And actually, this is a purchased hunk of honey calcite. And you can see that it kind of does have the formation of dog tooth uh, calcite. Obviously, this is not dog tooth calcite, but it looks like it, it could have formed dog tooth calcite based on its structure. And a lot of honey calcite uh, has that same structure. I'll be showing you all of that in another video as well. <laughs> This one is extremely glossy, however, the high, high gloss may be a man-made treatment on top of it, usually an epoxy, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. <clears throat> and while we're talking different formations, um, it can form also in like a sort of a cube formation uh, and I do have some specimens that I'll be you know showing off in another video <laughs> um, so calcite like most carbonates will dissolve uh, with most forms of acid calcite can be either dissolved by groundwater or precipitated by groundwater uh, depending on several factors including the water temperature pH and dissolved iron concentrations um, although calcite is fairly insoluble in cold water, uh, acidity can cause uh, dissolution of calcite and releases uh, carbon dioxide gas, usually. <clears throat> so, since I showed you a couple of purchased ones, I think uh, it was just the honey calcite so far. I'll show you this orange calcite. That's also a purchased piece. And again, you can see that high gloss very common <laughs> uh, to kind of stabilize calcite with an epoxy, very, very thin epoxy, um, because calcite tends to crumble um, and can be made up of, I don't know, different, small different chunks. I'll show you my other purchased green one and then you'll see what I mean by that. <laughs> Here's my big one. So you can see what I mean by, it is all one calcite specimen, but they are kind of like broken off little pieces that are being held together. And you see that a lot with calcite, a lot. Um, and so, yeah, typically pieces like these that you would buy that have that extreme glossiness, almost like a wax has been poured over top. Um, 
most likely it has had some sort of epoxy treatment or some treatment that has stabilized all the calcite crystals solidified them all together here's another purchase one <laughs> and again has that high gloss I love this one this one was labeled emerald calcite you know just <laughs> referring to its more bluish green color than the usual um, types of green calcite that we see so it has a little bit more of a different hue so pretty this is more typical of the color you would see in green calcite just a little stabilized piece and this one I really like. It has a rainbow in it. <laughs> and it's a very, very, very light, kind of minty green. I like this one. Yeah, and it's got some cool rainbows in it. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's due to the epoxy or the actual stone, but I like it either. <laughs> and again. So typically calcite is white or completely colorless, uh, clear, although as we can see, it can range in a huge variety of shades and colors, uh, including gray, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and even black, um, depending on the, you know, mineral impurities that can be found within the calcite. So, I think I've showed you all of the purchase type ones, although possibly not this one from England, from Glastonbury. It's a polished round stone. And this blue um, and some peach as well. Calcite is from Canada. It looks like shiny flakes, but it is calcite. And this one from the same location, more of a peachy pink, but then with that blue as well. There we go. This pink and blue one uh, was given to me uh, from a friend. Uh, it's from the Lanark County in Ontario. And then I really love these blue calcite chunks, again from the Lanark County. Such a nice, soft, ghostly blue. I love them. And here's another. Oh, cool. A gift from the same two lovely men. <laughs> they sent me some wonderful stuff this summer since I'm not able to get out. So kind. So this one is calcite and it has a rainbow iron oxide coating on it. If I can get that rainbow glow for you. Oh yeah, a little bit. I've never <laughs> myself found a natural rainbow iron inclusion like this, so I was pretty darn thrilled when I saw that. <laughs> it's 
too cool. Yeah, too neat. I could start that one forever. There we go. This one is very crumbly, like I said. Something like this would, would definitely need to be stabilized. And this one's orange calcite with green dioxide, and this one's from Almonte, Ontario. And again, was given to me by some lovely friends. <laughs> Back to that Wilberforce location. Got this nice big hunky, kind of like a, a yellow orange calcite. Even some gray calcite on the back. And we can see some green diopside, some of those red uh, joeythite after uh, pyrite crystals. This clear pink calcite is from the Halliburton area. Really gorgeous. Quite translucent uh, compared to the other calcites that we have around here. And the black is biotite, which is a black mica. That's what biotite is. I love the combination. I think it's so pretty together. It's so striking. This translucent peachy pink with very dark contrasting flakes of black mica. Too cool. See how clear? You can see some of the mica through the crystals. And you know, even though um, calcite isn't a, a rare thing to find, it's not worth billions and billions, I still love it. We can still love it. <laughs> Again, from the Wilberforce area, got some yellowish cream calcite on top. Tiny, tiny bits of green, chrome green diopside underneath. Fun. This one's got orange calcite with smoky quartz, diopside crystals, and some of those little pyrites as well. And again from the same area in Wilberforce. A lot of this material can be found on my tours. <laughs> it's definitely easy to find beautiful calcite specimens on my tours. <laughs> like this one. Very neat. And then the last stuff is a salmon calcite, a very nice vibrant salmon calcite um, with most likely a gray tremolite. And this one is from the Bancroft area. Very cool. And I love this one. You can see the fibrous gray stuff 
it really looks like Tremline, and Tremline is listed uh, for this location, so I'm assuming it is. Fit. All right, folks, did I show them all? I think I might have. <laughs> it was quite a few. <laughs> Thanks for holding on through all of that, guys. I hope you learned a little bit about calcite and if not then I hope you just enjoyed looking at all of my colorful beauties. <laughs> Thanks so much for stopping in again. See you next time.